This week's episode is brought to you by Sweetwater. Sweetwater this month is presenting the first ever content creator sales event. It's an event geared towards guys like Ryan and I, podcasters. Look at us. Bunch of content creators over here. Vloggers, bloggers, and other content creators. Vlogger, vloggers, bloggers, and just regular old lumber loggers. Yeah. Uh, Sweetwater will have featured deals, value-packed bundles, and things to help people create digital content. Everything from mixing headphones to the Isotope Spire Studio, an assortment of broadcast microphones. Stuff like uh, we have right here, the, the yeah, Rode The Rodecaster, which is freaking great. Yeah. Um, allows us to make phone calls. Ooh, phone calls. Yeah, if you, if you listened last week, we, we made a phone call. We were playing songs and listening to them. It's, it's a big step up for us versus yeah. recording with a field recorder like we used to do. Yep. It's so cool. They have all the gear you need to start uh, creating content on today's digital marketplace. I sound like a tool, but that's okay. This is a great deal. Nothing's new, Steve. Go you jump. Go jump on it. We got a link in the in, in the in the show notes. If you click that link and buy something, we get paid. Yeah, we make all kinds of money. Boom. We make one dollars. We make two dollars. We make three dollars. I mean, all kinds of money. Hey, Ryan, you know what I want to do right now? What do you want to do right now? My name is Ryan. His name is Steve. You're listening or watching 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, fixing, modding, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. I was drinking one of these last episode. You, uh, this is the old Raz. Uh, I'm drinking one of these. Stout from North Coast. A Coors company. from Golden, Colorado. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, this first ad was sent to us by Tyler Estes. Estes? Sure. I think it's Estes. Tyler Estes. Why are, this you do- thing, why are you doing that? Why am I doing what? That thing with your voice. What thing with my voice? I, I don't know. You're like, Estes? 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 I was this talking, is a, Steve. This is a raw Q or custom eight base. Arachnophilia 2017 red Mali burl clear gloss. Best in the world. Incredible build from the brilliant mind and hands of Kevin Butler. Hidden prototype extended magnetic field pickups by Michael Harwood. Spectacular inlays. Very low serial number. I'd bet the serial number is like one. To order today would be well over $18,000 in delivery of approximately 18 months. So you could save about $3,000 and get it now uh, with this ad. There's no other description. No other talk of what is going on here. And there is... A lot. a lot going on here. There is a here. lot going on here. <laughs> I mean, my, as I was screen grabbing this so we could talk about it on the show, uh-huh. the thing I kept thinking was this is opulence in the wrong direction. This is like what happens when you have too much money and you don't know what to do with it anymore. Like you just get weird stuff made with just fancy, fancy materials because you're going for materials that cost the most. Right. Not because you have any sort of grand vision in mind, you know. It just feels like too much, right? Like at the core, I mean, of the, you have to have some kind of plan going into this because, like, sure, you don't just like start building a guitar and you and think to yourself, you know what, this needs spider inlays. Well, maybe this, maybe the guy who ordered this called up the builder and was like, you know what, I'm thinking about lately spiders i've got an unlimited budget you build whatever you think will go good with spiders and so the builder just went crazy and you know he went too far with the spiders and now the guy's selling it because you know he's a little creeped out by how much spider stuff is on on here but uh i mean what we're looking at here is for the for the audio listeners at home just look at the imger look idiots. at the imger uh we're looking at is this imger imger imager is what i th- hear people refer to it as Um, is an eight string bass guitar in that each string has been doubled up Uh with a higher octave. I mean, that's a normal eight for eight string bass. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not one of those super crazy eight stringy guitars that are out these. It's it's a four string uh, concept that just has doubled strings. Uh, the body is shaped like a crazy, you know, like kind of BC rich ish, like warlock ish kind of like crazy spikes and weird 
gnarly spider leg. It's kind of got like an, uh, an intense violin thing going on. Actually. Yeah, because it's got that cut cut away in the middle, but yeah. it's like way more insane. And then it's got like a spider mandible headstock thing going on. Spider inlays, spider web inlays on the fretboard as well. And just this ridiculous, over-the-top, opulent, like, burl wood kind of top and back on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, something interesting about the body is that the tuners for the high octave strings are at the ass end of the guitar. Yeah. Behind the bridge, and the tuners for the heavy octave strings are on the headstock. Uh, When I was screen grabbing it, I was like... Oh, wait, didn't I see tuners on the other side? Why are yeah, there tuners yeah. on the other side too? And when I saw the, the the tuners on the butt end of it, I was like, oh, is this thing headstockless? I just kept, because I was so like distracted by everything else going on that I kept forgetting where the tuners were. All right, so this part right here where the, the strings go in next uh-huh. to the bridge, I feel like th- that's on the wrong theme guitar. You mean the little tail piece there? Yeah. What do you think? What what theme is that? Should be on a bat guitar. You know there are some like bat elements going on here. Like I was gonna say earlier, the body's more of like this like alien bat shape than a spider shape. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not a lot spidery going on about with the body. It's kind of some sort of alien winged creature. Yeah. Versus a spider. But I mean, I if I saw a spider playing this bass, I'd be like, yeah, that's a good bass for a spider. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you had a bass that was people themed and it had like a person inlaid on the fretboard. Just be like, oh yeah, you know, like people, people are cool, right? <laughs> Spiders probably look at this bass and like, that is nonsense. Why would you do that? I mean, even the output jack on this is some sort of custom piece of metal work. I just feel like it's too much. It's too opulent. There's too many details going on. There's like four different kinds of binding going on around the body as it wraps around the edge. All this mixed in like burly wood and, you know, the the classic, you know, 15 different kinds of wood skunk stripe going down the back of the neck through the body with, you know, purple heart and flamed maple and, you know, three other kinds of woods in there. I'm almost, I almost feel like the spider inlay on the fretboard is the most like conservative part of this guitar design. (laughs) Like that, oh, that's just an inlay. You could put that on any guitar. Right. But the rest of it is just kind of bananas. It also just kind of feels like the spider inlay is, um, like if you it's put that, the only sp- really sp- I guess like the there's webs at the top and bottom, and you know I I yeah if someone I showed me this guitar and didn't show me the inlays and they said guess the animal I would go straight to bat I wouldn't go to spider right I think you know the, the one thing with the inlays that I just noticed and it's hard to tell and I I wish the description itself you know aside from the mag- extended magnetic field pickups it doesn't really tell you a lot about it. Yeah, um, I mean, we're the, the bass doesn't have traditional pickups in it. It appears to have no pickups, which makes right. me think the pickups are hidden inside of the body or it is a, a piezo, piezo right. sort of concept. Yeah, I'm not... there. I thought there was a picture at the back, but suddenly... There is a picture at the back. Right, but I... Okay, yeah, so I don't see anywhere like a pickup would have been rear-mounted on this either. Um I mean, there's definitely some kind of controls going on because there's a control plate. Mm-hmm. Or maybe that's just where the wiring is. Yeah, because there, there's no controls on the top. So there's some kind of electronics down there where the control plate uh, is. Yeah, that might just be a- access. Maybe it's, uh, you know, pick up direct to jack. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm wondering if it's some sort of piezo thing or like some sort of... Because you don't see any routing anywhere behind the body where a pickup would be hidden or something like that. I have no idea what's going on with the pickup in this thing. I mean, that might be the special sauce right there. The thing that costs 15 to $18,000 and takes years to build for whatever reason. I mean, it, it, the the craftsmanship is there. Yeah. It looks like this was built by someone who really knows what they're doing. It's just like, because there's so much money involved. And I think so much justification to hit that dollar point, like, 
I think a lot of taste and a lot of design ideas go out the window. Right. This is just so, so specific. You'd have to be in some kind of like, yeah, you know, you have to be in some kind of like Gothic metal, not even, not in the sense of like a Swedish death metal, but I'm saying like Rob Zombie, Guar kind of a thing. I don't think that kind of band is even going to be into this. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing like some, you know, old rich boomer that's way into the Grateful Dead or something you like that. You think so? Yeah, it's got that hippie psychedelic thing going on. Uh, I don't know. Like it's got that acid trip thing going on. It doesn't look like metal. So the, the one detail I did want to point out that I thought was what was actually pretty cool is that is the inlay itself is two webs. It, like the way it looks in the pictures is it's just two webs and a spider. Right. But with the spider on the spider picture, you can see it, but you, it's not really, it's hard to see in other pictures is there is a center abalone strip running the entire length of the neck. The spider is crawling between the two webs. Right. Yeah, I mean that's a fun detail. Like I said, I think the the inlay is the most conservative part of this whole thing. When I search for rock hewer, all that's coming up is bases that look like that. So this is definitely his style. I mean that's a more conservative shape right there. But I'm getting a bunch of weird, not weird, but just random people. Rock hewer is the the builder. All right. Yeah, I don't. Let's see if we can narrow that down a bit. Yeah, I mean, that's a more normal base right there. Right, and that's the same kind of... Even though it's it's got crazy spikes and, and shapes on it, like like you could see like a like a Grateful Dead fan going for that sort of thing, right? Yeah, you're, you're yeah that's up, like very, a very alembic. Yeah, you're picking up on that uh, aesthetic. A lot of their stuff is... A lot of their stuff is very. I'm just looking at their main website, and they have a, a few pictures. And it's there's a lot of very alembic ex, in, inspired look here. Yeah, I mean that's a very much more conservative one right there. Yeah, that's more like your your classic base shape. I don't know, man. I just I just look at this. I'm like, someone spent too much money getting crazy, and then now they're selling it. You know. Is that a point? Did I make a point? I don't think I did. I don't know. You know, it's it's expensive. It's very niche. I'm sure, you know, if you wanted to get something custom made by like a master craftsman, you know, the price makes sense, but this is a hard resell. I mean, imagine... This is like the epitome of custom guitars are hard to resell. Yeah. Imagine you had so much money that you could have anything built for you and you just sat around like coming up with ideas and you could just throw money at it. Like this is the sort of thing that would result from that. And it's great for the guy who built it cause he's get, he gets money and he gets to put, you know, food on the table and whatnot. Um, but I just feel like there's something to be said for having design constraints that cause you to make an instrument that is more universally appealing. Because right. this is the appeal of this is so niche that I can't imagine there being more than like three or four people in the world who want this. Mm -hmm. But if you have, no, I mean, if you I have agree. to make something that's got so greater mass appeal, even if you're reaching you know, three or four people in the world want this, and how many of those people have sixteen thousand dollars? Right. Yeah. Exactly. How much? Oh, this is only uh, thirteen eighty five a month with a firm. Oh, good. Thirteen hundred eighty-five or thirteen one thousand three hundred and eighty-five dollars a month. A month, damn. Yeah. That is a uh, well. I changed back. My this is a backyard uh, shed converted into a studio apartment in the city of San Diego. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, someone posted an ad for a real estate listing that was a literal yeah, shed. That in apparently the got like national uh, coverage. I kind of wonder if it was a joke. No, it's real. All right, it's real. Like it has still, a bathroom. It's uh, an actual like it's basically a granny yeah. flat. I still say they could get make more money by Airbnb it out. Excuse me. I mean, in that neighborhood. What's new, yeah, Steve? Yeah, you got anything new going on? I, you know, I tried really hard to come up with something new, and I just couldn't. So uh, he I'm was straining over here. He was like, I was like, nothing new is coming out. <laughs> 
It's all old stuff. <laughs> Uh, I got more Harley Benton guitars. Yeah. I did an unboxing with them, but I got, uh, this bad boy back this here. This is the only one that I, that I saw actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't watch your video. <laughs> I didn't have time for that. I got the Brian May style thing here. Oh, right. You know what? I, for some reason I, I did see that and I just haven't processed it. I'm a, you know, I was, I was filled with dread yeah. Knowing that these were going to be coming soon because I've been so overwhelmed by a lot of the guitars I've been getting and not having space. But I'm pretty happy with these. I think the uh, the uh, the semi hollow there that Steve has got is a great player. I'm still trying to decide if I like it better or worse than the, uh, than the Firefly that I've got. I need to choose which one I'm going to keep. But then this guy here, the Brian May style one, the BM75. Yeah. I think this is going to be a regular church guitar for me. It's got this really bright, like high character twang to the pickups that just works really well with like murky delays and reverbs and whatnot. Ooh. And it's just really comfortable and plays real nice. Swap, swap with me real quick. Play this thing. Oh. Don't ding it, Steve. And Dang it, Bobby. And yeah, it does all the out of phase stuff and whatever, but I think it's just a fun player. This neck is so, like, it's weird switching because the neck on that one is so much bigger than on this. Yeah, the semi hollow neck is really super fat. Some good, good playing from Steve over here. I'm holding it in a really weird position. I feel like if you plug that guitar in, you would probably like the way it sounds. I want to take it apart and I want to figure out where those pickups came from too, because they don't have any markings on the outside. I want to see if they're actual Burns pickups. Usually Harley Benton stuff has Roswell pickups in it, but it's not marked Roswell. So I wanna see if there's any uh, determining marks on there so I could figure out where those pickups came from and maybe get some more for some other guitars. But I might need some more stuff in my life that's got Burns pickups in it. Cause like I said, I just really like the way it sounds. So now I need to figure out uh, guitars to get rid of. I don't wanna get rid of some of the Fireflies. I want to get rid of some Harley Bentons, but it's just got ridiculous over here with how much stuff I have, you know? What's it? Did you just get those two guitars? Yeah. Was, okay. I didn't and then I've got two more on order, but they're like Jeez. three to six weeks delivery because they're being made still. Oh, wow. Fresh off the presses, fresh off the manufacturing floor. And I might not even get them when they are made because they might go like, oh, we just sold them all. <laughs> we, we didn't have any left over to send to you, Ryan. Oh, dang. Yeah, so who knows if I'll get them at all. But I'm pretty happy with those two I just got. I just need to pick some stuff to actually get rid of here pretty right. soon because stuff is getting... I've got... You can't see it. I've got three guitars laying on the floor over here. I've got uh, guitars upstairs that are just laying around, and it's just become too much. There's too many guitars around here. I know I complain about it a lot, but that's the reality of my life, guys. No big deal. I'm just drowning in guitars. You know? I do know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so you got nothing new, huh? Just oh, a, man. Just a boring boy over here. Yeah, I you know, I feel like uh, I have a feeling by the time this episode rolls around, I might have some new stuff because, uh, you know, it's a, like 20 days out or whatever. Yeah. I know what's new with you. Out. What's new with me? Uh, you and I are sponsored now. Oh yeah, by Manscaped. I'm wearing I'm wearing their shirt. We're now official podcasters. This is the most like podcastery sponsor we've ever had. Yeah, Manscaped.com. I mean, uh, uh, you know, what's next? Purple mattress, Casper mattress, any of those mattresses? Could be. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, these guys sponsor all the podcasts all the big ones and now yeah. they reach out to a niche podcast like us look at they've got this newspaper in here they made a full newspaper 
about trimming your pubes. And that's what we're talking about here is a pube trimmer. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because I actually already did this. I got some underwear. Ryan's stuff is all packaged up. Uh, but Shirt. I actually use this because Manscaped is number one in below the belt grooming. Wait, I, you I used I want to check it out. Yeah, I used it. Uh, they offer precision engineered tools for Let your, me see those balls, Steve. Family jewels. I'll show you later. I'll show you later. <laughs> so, th- so we'll start right here. You're talking about the Manscaped Daily News. Um, this is kind of like a comedy. Dude, just put stuff down. I'll explain it okay. all to you. Just, okay. okay. No, you can like set it out here. That's oh, okay. fine. Okay. Okay. So we'll start here. This is the Manscaped Daily News. Uh, each page in here is is kind of similar. Some of them, yours are very different than mine. Uh oh. Actually, this is a, vi- a completely different set, so you, I guess you get different ones. Uh, but this is for you to put down on the floor of your bathroom, so you're not putting like flushing those hairs oh. down your uh, down your bathtub, or you're gonna clog up your drain. That's to catch all you your just hairs. Throw this stuff, you just throw this down on the ground. All your sack hair and whatever are gonna, is gonna fall onto this. Wrap up the paper, throw it away. All right. Cool, cool. Let's so, see this buzzer. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because I, like I said, I use this. I've never done. I've I've done a very small amount of what they call manscaping, right? Yeah, yeah. Always with like scissors. So here's difference number one with scissors. You, you know kinda, where you know where I have manscaped. Where in the past is uh, I'll get like my 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 armpit hair. Okay, it'll like when my arm is down, I'll get like a curl sticking out like that. Yeah. yeah. And it's just kind of like, kind of annoying. I just, I just trim that off. All right. So here's the thing, right? Uh, I've done like the scissor thing. Like you got, (laughs) you got a little poof sticking out of your, of your underwear or whatever, of your, of your board shorts. You're like, Oh, I got to cut that off. with scissors. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to figure out like how long is that? So first of all, with this thing, you got a, a, a small trimmer. It's small. It's compact. This is like way smaller actually than I expect it to be. You have four, That's what four she lengths said. plus the clean trim. We got Go three on. millimeter, six uh, millimeter, nine millimeter, 12 millimeter. So I went with the 12 because that's the longest one. And, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. But here's the thing is it's it's there. It's 12. You don't have to really think about it. You just go to work. I mean, that's the longest you want your pubes to be anyways, 12 millimeters. Apparently so. I mean, that's the uh, the that's the ideal, right? So what this is here, what you're putting together together there, is the lawnmower 2.0. It has proprietary skin safe technology, so this trimmer will not nick or snag on your nuts. That's actually really <laughs> that's, important. That that's is important. important because what if this thing? I mean, you accidentally cut your nuts. You're using scissors. You grab your nuts. By the base, you're using scissors. You trim your whole nut sack yeah. off. Well, yeah, I that mean, could you're, happen. You're, you're, it, it could. That could it's happen. Probably not, but you know, it's definitely My, it's I, definitely a lot easier to clip yourself. And all also, the scissors like, I own are super sharp. You could definitely cut your nut sack off with them. Okay. This will not cut. This will not cut your nut sack off. Look at this. I'm touching it with my hand. It's not cutting my hand. I could probably touch my eyeball with this and it wouldn't yeah, cut I my eyeball. Yeah, I want to do that. All right, so, so there's a bunch of other stuff, right? I've been using this. I've used three quarters of the products in here. Actually, 80%. Man, you've been flying through this if stuff. You, if you count this stuff, I've, I've been used, I used 80%. So this is the crop cleanser. This is a hair and body wash. Um, so it's it's just got like a nice kind of like uh, piney, like woody smell to it. Like we're spending a lot of time on this sponsor. They're getting getting their money's worth out of us. This uh, this this stuff actually is the stuff I was most excited about. I will have to say, which is the Crop Preserver, which is an anti chafing ball deodorant, and the Crop Reviver, which this is the one product I haven't used yet, but this is a spray also for your junk. Steve, on a scale of three to twelve millimeters, how excited were you? Uh, which direction is which? <laughs> I think you know. So here's the thing, right? At our first NAM, we were recommended Body Glide. I uh, recommended Body Glide. You recommended it? I thought it was recommended to you. No, I was the one with the Body Glide. So oh, Body Glide. It USB charges. You yeah. can plug it into your computer. So, <laughs> so you can keep this right next to your computer so everyone at work can know that your pubes are nice and trim. Well, so anywhere you go, you have this compact trimmer. You're already carrying a, a USB charger block because you're, yeah. you got to charge your phone. So now it's I got like one, one right here. Thing. There you go. I could plug this into the, to the roadcaster here and charge it. <laughs> I don't think that's how the roadcaster works. <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. This stuff right here, crop preserver, use this with your body glide at Nam. Your balls are going to stay fresh all day long. 
Fresh balls, finally. All day freaking long. I'm tired of these stale balls. This is, no, I'm. No, they, I, like these are, for a super sweaty dude like you, <laughs> this, this is stuff, your wife is going to really appreciate this. You, you, you have na- no idea. You nailed it. You, you have no idea. You, you know what I'm like. I'm a super sweaty, super hairy dude down there. Uh, Actually, also, you know. Other than the armpit thing, I haven't spent uh, much time in my life uh, trimming, and I've got a lot to trim. There's just, a lot just of. Just do it. I, I will say, like, I only did, I only did the, uh, the actual, like, standard pubic region. Yeah. Uh, today was like, a, I felt like a whole new man all day. You know, I was hanging out with uh, with Gabor and Rick uh-huh. at, at uh, 42 Gear Street. They're yeah. two Australian boys. And uh, they said to me, like, you've got the bush down there. They didn't mean you've got a bush. They meant like like the bush, uh-huh. like the in back, Australia, the back country. That's they. That's, that's what, what they, you have. That's the phrase they used to describe my whole body. That's right. They both saw me naked. They weren't naked. I was naked, and they saw I it. Don't even want to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> what stays at Henning? Here, what happens at thing? Henning's house stays at here's Henning's the other house. thing. That's like a six thousand RPM trimmer. It's gonna Holy it's gonna hell. cut through freaking anything. It's gonna but it won't cut through, that down. But it won't cut through my balls. No, sack. it's just gonna take your hair down. Boom, like that. If you want 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com, use the code 60 cycle hum. Um, Here's what I'm going to say. Get it. Here's what are you going to say? say? Guys, here's my pitch. What looks better? A headstock with a bunch of strings hanging off the ends of it or a nice trimmed up head up headstock. You know the answer. You know the answer. Go trim your fucking balls. Trim your pubes, guys. Stop being such a mess down there, ladies. You can do it, too. You got pubes, This too. isn't for ladies, man. This is only for men. I know it it's says, called Manscaped. I know it says Manscaped, but it could say Womanscaped as well. You got pubes. It's all made out of the same stuff. Trim it up. Come on, guys. Trim it up. Stop being so sloppy with your pubes. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about, uh, I mean, technically it's an ad, but we're going to treat it like a topic because who freaking cares we, what we talk Did about? Did I say 20% off plus free shipping with the code 60 cycle hum at checkout? Yeah, you're going to buy a pube trimmer anyways. Might as well buy one that makes us some Go money, guys. It. No, it's, I'm telling you, this is life-changing. This is life-changing stuff. You know what? Steve had a pep in his step when he came in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I wonder if Steve's trimmed his pubes. I feel lighter. I felt lighter all day. Are you sure you didn't cut off your ball sack? <laughs> All right. This was sent in as an ad, but uh, it, like Ryan said, it's a topic. This was from Andrew Renard. This is a fish signed autographed full size guitar. Uh, I was, this is a bunch of other autographed full size. Well, let guitars. me tell the story. Let me tell the story. I was looking at this ad. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This fish signed another friggin' guitar. And these people are going to try it. It's like a, you know, a, a carnival prize guitar. And now they're trying to flip it for 900 bucks or whatever. Boring. And then I looked down underneath the ad and it says, see similar items, all kinds of carnival guitars signed by all kinds of bands, similar prices. The U2 one, 2000 bucks if you can see that there uh bob dylan only 999 dollars and 99 cents sorry bob dylan youtube is worth more than you and then so i click on see similar items and all of them are from the same seller from this backstage items on etsy soon to be reverb uh they've got 118 items all pretty much exactly like this Budget carnival prize guitars. They've got albums. They've got straps, you know, photos and stuff like that. All have been signed and selling at ridiculous rates. Like this is like a cottage industry. This seller has here. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering like, do they work at like, like the Del Mar fair or something like that? Like if like the, the, the county fair circuit where these bands are coming through and they're just like, oh, hey, if you guys could all sign this guitar here in the green room, it would help out a lot. And then they just take it home and try to sell it. Is that the grift here? Like, do you think these bands are aware of where these guitars are ending up? I'm trying. Okay, let's see. What does this actually say in the details? 100% authentic, full size, mint condition, did a COA, as well as pictures of Trey, so this is the fish one, Trey and some of the other members of the band signing autographs outside their hotel. So basically it sounds like this is a guy who just, I don't know, stalks these the hotel where these bands stay or something. He's got a, I don't know. Yeah, maybe he stalks the hotel. 
but this is definitely like a full time gig for him. You get 118 yeah. items going. That's like half of your work year. You think right these there. are all things that like he got signed? Like he gets things signed on a regular basis. Oh, the, the fish one is vintage from before 2000. So maybe this is just his collection over maybe the year. It was maybe his this hobby is hobby, and now he's trying to sell them. Maybe this is was an estate, uh, some kind of estate sale. This person has only been on Etsy for two, since 2019. So this 118 items have all been listed in the last 10 months. Well, maybe they were trying to sell them on eBay before, and then they just discovered Etsy mm, or something. Could be. Could be. All right, looking at this, uh, this all these different items. What would you actually? Is there anything in here that you're like, ah, no, I want to. Like I'm not saying you would pay for it. Is there even anything in here that you were like, no, I don't want any of you it. You don't want any of it. No, none of it. No, none. Nada. What, do you see something that I'd want? Why is the ACDC signed autograph eight by 10? One of them is $400 and the other one is $250. Does uh, one of them have more signatures? I guess one of them has four, sign- five, ooh, five. Yeah. Maybe it's the, the other signatures. one only has two. Also, in one, in the more expensive one, Angus is wearing the hat, and the other one, he's not wearing the oh, hat. Oh. You know, the hat makes a big difference. Does it ever bother? Because, okay, so this bothers me. Okay, what is it? That, so the picture of the fish guitar, and, and you can't tell this for sure for all of the other ones, but I'm, I'm expecting that this is the case. These are all, like, $15 carnival guitars. That's what I'm saying. That's why I think this this comes from, like, the the... Like the county fair circuit of concerts, and it's totally like the bands that would play county fairs. And whatever. maybe this was someone who was at like some radio station that closed down, and they're like, uh, "What maybe. do you want to do with all these guitars?" And they're like, "I don't know, man." Like maybe it is a radio. Y'all are out of thing. business, and we don't care. Go home. They raided the prize locker of the of the radio station. Yeah, I just there's something about it just seems dumb to me. Like, is there? A huge. I feel like if there was a huge market for this sort of thing, then this guy wouldn't have 120 things to sell right now. Yeah, because it would they would sell all the time. Maybe he just listed them all right now. Maybe he had 200. We don't know. <laughs> he started out with a thousand, and this is all that's left. But the prices are so high too. Yeah, some of these prices I don't I don't understand. Uh, maybe you know, a 200 dollars for an Eddie Vedder signed photograph. Yeah. That actually, so the signed photograph, uh, yeah, I, w- I would say like a Eddie Vedder signed photograph is maybe like 50 bucks. A guitar strap signed by James Hetfield. 250. Two, 250. Well, I mean, his career is over, right? Yeah, he's going into Metallica's, rehab. Metallica's, Metallica's done, so. Yeah, they're gone. Bob Dylan signed a pit guard with no hardware. Just a pit guard is $1,000. Well, Bob Dylan probably charged like $800 to do that because he's a capitalist. Uh, some of these are like almost in, kind of insulting when the an entire Foo Fighters signed guitar is less than a Bob Dylan signed pit guard. Imagine you're the Foo Fighters and you you pull this up and like, okay, let's see what they're selling the guitar for. And you're like, Bob Dylan's getting a thousand. We all signed that black guitar and they're only asking six twenty five. We're worth more than that, guys. The flip side is, you know, Radiohead's gotta be like, you're only asking seventy five dollars more for our guitar than you than you did for the Foo Fighters. Only they'd do it in a British <clears throat> accent. Foo Fighters are known more as a guitar. Actually, if it was Tom York, it'd just be like. Foo Fighters are known more as a guitar band than Radiohead. But like, it's not like any of these guitars make sense for the bands either. No. They're all just the, cheap, just strat, cheap the strats. cheapest Strat knocks off, knockoffs you can imagine. There's a country guy who's got an acoustic. I mean, it's this thing I say about this sort of thing all the time. It's like, you get me the guitar that these bands have played and gigged. Right. Even a couple times. And have them sign that, then that's something that's got value to it. Sure. Whether or not these like or not, cheap like carnival prize, like radio station prize nonsense guitars, who cares? I mean, sell me their their autograph on a napkin and it's worth as much yeah. to me. Whether you or know? not you personally would pay for it, you, there's at least, you know, under some understanding of value when reverb does these um artist collection oh, yeah. sales and it's you know i'd for sure buy buy something from an artist collection it's like yeah. oh yeah i yeah i'd buy that that guitar that that guitarist i really like 
never used on a tour or recording or whatever, but I know that they owned it, owned it. Right. Right. Yeah. It's I'd, their personal piece. Yeah. They they bought that or acquired that because they were interested in it. Yeah. Then, it, then that's a, like a talking thing versus like, oh, here's a thing with some scribbles on it. I swear it's, you know, this cool band that signed it. Like, I don't care about that. Right. Like, when was the last time? I think I, this is like a mentality of people like outside. And I think that's who this is for. This is for people who don't play guitar. This is for people who are music lovers, but not musicians, you know? Mm -hmm. And I encounter this a lot with like people's thoughts about art and design and whatnot. Right. They're, they're like, Oh man, yo, yeah. Oh, if you could get a piece of paper signed by Picasso or whatever, then it'd be surely be worth a lot of money. And like, uh, no, probably not. I mean, it's just a signature. I mean, you could probably track down the deed to his house and it's, not worth any more than any other other deed, you know? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that might be, I understand what you're saying. It's not going to be worth like mega bucks. I, you know, there's a, there's is an autograph. That's an, it's own cottage industry. Sure. But it's not this massive score multiplier. That, right. Right. That we're seeing. Applied but also already here. signs all of his artwork anyway. So signatures there guys. Right. Just go buy the art. Just go buy the art. <laughs> Buy it. I don't know. Maybe I'm super wrong about this, but that's my take on the whole scene of memorabilia, I guess. Right. And it's different. Like I realize there's like sports memorabilia, but still like doesn't Adam have like a baseball bat that was signed by 20 Tony Gwynn or something like that. And it was like a Probably. bat that was used in a game or whatever. I think, I think in sports memorabilia, it at least there tends to be, a much stronger collector's market, but it doesn't drive in this thing where it's like, like there actually is a grading un unfortunately or unfortunately. Cause when you're a kid, you just go to like your local big five or whatever and grab whatever baseball off the shelf, not realizing that like, and again, this sounds, this sounds dumb, but it's like you, people will go and they'll spend like buy a 10 or $15 or whatever they are now, like official, Rawlings Major League Baseball and go get it signed. And it's actually worth significantly more that ball signed than like a Rawlings Little League Baseball. Okay. Just because it's the Major League. But that's the same thing here. You know, like if these were good guitars. No, but that I'm saying that is like a significant. A, uh, I mean, maybe like maybe you could think about it from like a score multiplier. Like that's a, that's an actual score multiplier. Right. So here, if I get a. Dave Grohl, 335, signed by Dave Grohl. Maybe it's worth like, I don't know, three or $400 more than a regular Dave Grohl, 335. Sure. What I'm saying, and then if, uh, a, and but I'm saying like any guitar signed by Dave Grohl is going to be worth maybe three or $400 more than, than just That's the not cost. Signed. That's the cost. That's of the, the cost of the signature. Whereas with a baseball, I'm saying like an official baseball, that is like cost ten dollars more than a cheap baseball is going to be worth like double. So like that cheap baseball huh. might be worth twenty five dollars, but that official baseball would be worth like fifty dollars. It, it, there's a scaling there, so it's actually functions more as a multiplier. Okay, but I think to that there is going back. There's a there's an object collectability, and all of those base objects are are cheaper in sports memorabilia. I would say like maybe the closer equivalent with music would be like getting a like getting a bat signed or getting a ball a uh, bat would be like a more expensive version of a ball mm -hmm. but they're all just objects. I think really you would compare like a ball versus a bat to maybe getting like a CD signed versus a uh, LP. Okay. You know, um here's my question. But once but be, even those are seen as like personal objects of the band because the band produced that item. Right, right. You know, there's an official affiliation there. This is just some random jank guitar. Yeah, that you could win by throwing enough basketballs yeah. through a hoop. And those basketballs aren't even signed by Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Here's my question. What's the difference between baseball and, uh, like, say, baritone ball or tenor ball? Um, baseball is a lot lower. Hmm. Tenor ball is like, it's a very high ball. That's a high ball. Very high ball. So if someone throws a ball really high, you're like, there, that's a tenor ball. Tenor. Yeah. Tenor. That's a tenor. Yeah. And right in the middle there, you got your like soprano ball. Or is that higher than tenor? A soprano ball is higher. It's way higher than ball. tenor. That's yeah. a high ball. Yeah. You're going to think about that in the future. 
<laughs> you're gonna call that out in the middle of watching a sports game God, with your I friends at a sports game party and like oh there's a soprano ball <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that one out. <laughs> yeah, try it on for size. Oh guys. man, that was a real tenor there. <laughs> let us let us know how that works at your guys' sports parties, guys. Let me know how it goes. If anyone down. has like goes and watches, you know, the World Series is coming up. So if you're watching the World Series and somebody uh, uh, throws one, you know, up and in, be like, oh, that was a real tenor at the head. <laughs> Jeez. Yikes. <laughs> oh man, that was a low one. What is this? Contra baseball? Yeah. yeah. There's a good joke for you. Huh? Hashtag Contra Baseball. What is that, like a ground ball at Solo? So it bounced. <laughs> it bounced. <laughs> uh, next ad? Yeah, this ad was sent by Caleb Wong. It was in L.A. It says, uh, selling my Gibson SG that was once my pride and joy, but after years of not fixing the headstock properly, I've decided to part ways with it. It cost me over $1,400 when I bought it, <sighs> letting it go for 200 With some love, I'm sure it can sound amazing again. Thanks for looking. This was in again in Bell, California, which is in Los Angeles. Two hundred dollar Gibson SG. The break in the headstock is right below the E and uh, it's right e on strings. it's right on the truss rod screw. Yeah, yeah. So it's higher than a normal Gibson break. Like, how did this even happen? I've never seen one that high. I don't think. Yeah, it's in an interesting position. Um, Depending, it's it's hard to tell because you only have a picture of the front, not a picture of the back. So it's yeah, it, it's probably angled. Yeah, and I have a feeling the break makes actually makes okay sense once you see it that way. Um, once you see that it uh, it's probably coming in at a forty five degree angle. But so. it usually does break right there, closer like, to the truss. Cl- yeah, closer to the 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 screw close to the nut. Then. Uh, because that's the thin point of the wood where there's all that wood hollowed out right there where the truss is. Yeah. Like that is not a thin point of the wood. To have it break right there is kind of incredible. Yeah. It, I mean, it's interesting. Now, a lot, I, you know, I put on the group when I saw this, I'm like, man, that, that's $200. It's $200. Um, I'm I'm not gonna over. I bet you could. Yeah, I bet you could sell the pickups at a flip. Well, so that was my first like first thought is like if I you took this to a luthier, and um and they were like no nah, dude like this is gonna cost way too much like like I don't like I don't even want to take this on yeah then you sell the parts and like someone somebody made it sound think, said that they didn't even think they you know the parts could do that but I'm like I, I definitely think you could yeah um, the other thing is is um. You know, F- Philippe and I were 100% on the from same page Caroline. From, from Caroline yeah. Guitar Co. Is he goes, he goes, yeah, I've seen boot from uh, B.A. Ferguson Guitars. He's like, I've seen boot repair way worse than this. Like, It's certainly not the worst headstock repair what I've ever ma- seen, what but ma- it's a very ugly headstock what repair. What makes this look bad is I think the probably the owner already tried to repair it. Right. And so I think you would probably have to pay a little extra. And what would probably happen is the luthier would go in with a hair dryer or like a, a heat gun because that's probably just some cheap, like cheap wood glue. Heat the thing up, melt that glue. I don't think that's wood glue. You don't think it is? That's some kind of like mixed epoxy, like two part epoxy gunk. Well, and so that's what I'm saying. Like maybe, uh, you know, I think you could sell all of the hardware on this guitar and then find some, some amateur luthier who would take this off of you for like a hundred bucks. And oh, you're already saying sell it. Yeah. I'm saying if you wanted to do that. Yeah. Uh, no, what I'm saying is I would be on the, my original thought was like, I would drop 200 on this. Set another set a secondary budget of like I don't know maybe two fifty three hundred to get this repaired. Yeah, because this is a this is a Gibson SG standard, full block inlay, crown inlay. Yeah, it's got the pineapple. It's the good good. I mean, I've got I've got an SG that I got for two fifty, and then I probably it doesn't put, have any of those inlays. I probably put a hundred of work into it and you know cheap pickups that i threw yeah. into it and stuff it came with the gibson pickups but i didn't like the way it sounded so mm. i've been experimenting with pickups over the years uh but yeah mine is a is a faded that was refinished yeah. by the guy before me this is the the good good standard stuff um so yeah i you know i'm on i'm on team steve here i think a good luthier or repair guy 
would be able to take this. I don't think they would dissolve that glue or remove the glue. I think what they would do is they would figure out the angle of that break. They would take a band saw to it mm. as close to that angle as they could. They would clean up with like a with sanding all that excess glue, and then they would line it back up the way they thought it should be with whatever you know woodworking magic supports they need yeah. to, and put it back together clean. Yeah, that's my guess for that. Um, I mean, you know what? You could always just pay two hundred for it. This person played it for years with this repair. So that's and the you thing could I, just you could just be like, "This is my zombie guitar, and it lives even though it shouldn't." So yeah. you've got a guitar that plays like a, you know, a fifteen hundred dollar Gibson for two hundred bucks, even though. Well, it I looks, mean, with that with that mangled, maybe it doesn't play at like fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I don't think it would be a problem. Excuse me. It's outside of the 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 truss. Yeah. As long as that glue is stable, which I'm sure it is, I'm sure that break was at an angle and that epoxy is holding everything rock solid. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's going to be fine. It's just always going to look funky, you know? I think that's probably what I would do. I'd buy it and not do anything. <laughs> well, it did sell according to the screen grab. I'm not surprised. And uh, yeah, I'm not surprised either, man. I think. Uh you know, this was one of these moments. Every once in a while, somebody posts an ad on the group, and I go, "Why are you posting this? Just go get it." Yeah, go get it. And and that was uh, that was my thought. That's you, dude. Oh, is that me? Is that my foot? I we're probably hearing something that no one else can hear, but I was squeaking on the table with the edge of my shoe and staring at. I was me looking at you like, "What is that sound? Is there a mouse in the garage?" Yeah, I thought it was like a neighbor dog or something. All right, uh, neighbor dog. This uh, episode is also sponsored by Diderio. Uh, this. Time around, we're talking about the XT string. The XT string combines the uh, an ultra thin coating for extra extra long life. The steel core is it steel? It's a carbon steel core from the NYXL string. Yeah, the fusion twist also from the NYXL string to to generate the uh, most technologically advanced string that Diderio has to offer. This is the culmination of a lot of. Diderio's best R and D into one string. Yep. They're like, we learned a lot with this pack of strings. We learned a lot with that set of strings. We're going to combine them together. Here we go. This is the top string. Yeah. This is a string world. that has all of the advantages of a coded string. Yep. With none of the drawbacks. It's going to give you like long life, but it's going to give you that snappy tone that coded strings tend yeah, they to have, not have. They have a chart in the paperwork here that shows like uh, the sonic response of the string. And it closely follows the, uh, the response of an unwound string and then ends in the same place where their previous wound strings are way below. So they've learned a lot. They've improved the design of their wound, of their uh, coated string here. And uh, I can't wait to try it. I've got this pack here. I need to throw it on something I said in the last episode. I'm probably going to throw it on my Hallmark, and I think I'm still going to do that. It's a pack of 10 to 46s here. Yep. They make these for acoustic, electric, bass, classical guitar, mandolin, and banjo. Banjo? Check out the link in the description. Yep. Go look at them. This episode is also brought to you by Chase. Bliss audio. They make pedals more creative than you are, and yep. that's a fact. I've heard your music; it's not that good. But if it would be better, if it would be better, it'd be better if you had a Chase Bliss pedal. And you know what? I know you're saying I've got other creative stuff. I do. I know. I've seen your etchings; they're mediocre at best. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Chase Bliss pedals are more creative than you are. Uh, I have been using Chase Bliss pedals uh, frequently on my church board lately. Oh, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> Steve said sincerely, uh, I've been using the Dark World a lot. It's their double-sided reverb. Yeah. And I have been using the Warped Vinyl Hi-Fi, which is their chorus vibrato. Mm. And uh, uh, previous to that, I've been using the Condor a lot and the uh, Tonal Recall. I mean, yeah. these are all pedals that I use on the reg. Uh, I'm never going to sell the Gravitas, their tremolo. That's an amazing tremolo that gives you tremolo options i've never encountered in any other tremolo pedal and i've encountered a lot of tremolo pedals i'm just gonna say that so yeah go check out chase bliss stuff it is a wild it is top shelf stuff 
jsplitsaudio.com. <laughs> right, we this, really uh, put a button on that one. This next topic was sent by Ian Ferguson. He wants to know uh, what do you do when you get stuck in a rut with your playing? Yeah, or you just go buy a Chase Bliss pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, if, if it's in if it's in your playing, you go buy a Chase Bliss pedal. If it's uh, in in general, manscaped.com. <laughs> <laughs> if you're stuck in a rut because your pubes are so heavy, you got to trim those pubes with your manscaper. Oh, then you'll get you'll climb right out of that rut. I mean, honestly, when I read this, my first gut instinct was, yeah, go buy something. Like yeah. buy yourself something weird, something different, something like totally different than you've had before. I think that's the key. Like go buy a ring modulator. Yeah. You gotta do like that something to stretch. Or honestly, like go take some go take some lessons on or go listen to some music. From a genre that you mm. don't actually listen to, pick like a, normally, pick music from a genre that you think you hate. Yeah, Miley Cyrus, <laughs> the genre of Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I mean, I Lady Gaga. Things I keep around uh, to knock myself out of ruts: baritone guitar, ukulele, things like that. Get yourself a banjo, a mandolin. Like, get yourself some instruments that aren't your native instruments. And, uh, you know, keep those around to play around with for a while. Even if you get, like, a super short-scale guitar, get, like, a Duosonic or something like that, it'll take you out of, like, your playing rut, the feeling that you've been stuck in just playing the same Les Paul over and over and yeah. over and over again, and you're just so used to what it feels like that you just play the same stuff over and over again. Get something totally different. Like, even if you're not going to get it for yourself, go to a store and sit down with, like, a Dobro or something, you know, Get a bottle of Kirkland scotch, get a bottle of Kirkland scotch. Actually, I would say the drink pr- the as problem, much of it as you can before you pass out. You won't be in the rut anymore. Well, the problem is, is you'll be out of the rut for like half an hour. Then you'll pass out. And when you wake up, you'll you be won't remember rut. how you got out of the rut. No, you'll be in an actual rut, like a ditch next <laughs> yeah, to the road, like three miles away from your house. Yeah. Without your pants. So maybe don't do but that. But it's okay because you're perfectly manscaped. So there's nothing to be embarrassed of. Oh, man. <laughs> I think they're going to drop us. <laughs> that was probably going to happen anyways. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I mean, as far as like free stuff goes and not buying stuff, like what Steve said, listen to some music. Um Look up some YouTube videos, that's free, of people playing a style of music that you don't play and figure out how to play it. Yeah. Like, go learn, f- like, a little bit of flamenco guitar. Go watch a uh, freaking Charo play flamenco. Have you ever watched that? Yeah. She's a really super good flamenco guitar player. Who knew? Go watch a freaking Prince solo. Isn't that, like, all she's known for? No, she's like a singer, dancer, entertainer. I thought she was mostly a guitar player no, slash singer. No, she's like a singer dancer okay, for the most part. Uh, she's famous for being on the Love Boat. Right. I didn't watch the Love Boat. Neither did I, but I know that much, and I know that there was a, a captain and people were in love, and it was a boat. You know, and then I know Charo was there. True facts. Yeah, these are true facts, guys. Und- indisputable. Um, Go, sit down, watch a movie, have a guitar on your lap, try to play the soundtrack. Play Ooh. along to the soundtrack. Make your own soundtrack. Make your own soundtrack. Make your own music. <laughs> I don't know. Is there anything else you think, Steve? I think... I think. Kind of... Here's how you get out of a rut. I've been holding back. I didn't want to reveal All my, right. I didn't want to reveal my secret. What's your secret? Here's the secret to getting out of a musical rut, any creative rut, really. Uh-huh. Uh, you're sitting there. You're so frustrated. You keep doing the same thing over and over again. Take a bunch of hot sauce, rub it in your eyes. Rut will be gone right away. That sounds like not a thing. Rut will be just disappeared. You'll never fall into that rut again because you have disciplined yourself and you've punished yourself for that rut and your body will choose to avoid that rut in the future. Your su- your subconscious will say, "Not that rut." I know what happened last time. Ooh. So that's a that's my solution. <laughs> uh, last ad, and let's get out of here. Yeah, this last ad was sent by Justin Shack. It's called "Worst Bass Neck Ever." For five entire dollars, you can own this bass neck. So- Is 
yeah. think, I think that was five dollars. Was that worth it? Nope. All right. Uh, for five entire dollars, you can own this base neck. It comes with two extra holes in the fretboard, a truss rod that I can't figure out, and about eight extra mounting holes. Use it as a baseball bat. Carve it into a vampire stake. Practice refretting on it, or maybe just use it. Who cares? It's five bucks. It, it's this or a subway foot long. The choice is yours. I think I'd choose the foot long. I, I could not. So we only have the one picture of this. I could not see where the extra holes the fretboard are, but I don't know, man, $5. I might, I might be chasing this down. You think five bucks, you're going to chase down this neck, this neck that this guy hates. He says it's the worst base neck ever. If that was true, that it was for sure the worst base neck <laughs> ever. Say? No, the, ad, oh, the ad. Yeah. The title is what worst is, base neck ever. what is the bottom vol- value of base have, necks? This is maybe this is like a reverse psychology thing. But I, this is almost like on that level where it's like somebody says it's horrible and you're just like, I, like I got to see how bad it's like, not just, I got to see how bad it is. I'm like, mm, no, the, it's user error. It's not <laughs> the base neck doesn't suck. It's you got suck. a bunch of extra holes in it, dude. He can't figure out the trust rod. That means it's probably just free spinning and nothing happens when he spins it. He knows what a trust rod is and he can't figure it out. That means there's something wrong with the trust rod. That's my call on it. I think it's, I, th- I would take the foot long sub. For $5. Roast beef. I get a roast beef. I am buying a, a bottle of uh, some kind of IPA because IPA is usually the cheapest beer. Is it? Yeah. I wonder where that is. I don't know. Like for, for, oh, it's probably for, just the grain bill for a for, dark beer. For, bar- for bombers, typically IPAs are, are like the cheapest bomber. We're talking about not double IPAs. We're talking about IPAs. craft beer here because I mean this is a, a, a cheap beer yeah, compared yeah. to an IPA. Yeah. I mean, come you could on, buy a, like a six pack of course. So you would you would buy beer over over this neck over a Subway sandwich? Oh well, I thought we were talking about the neck. Um, would you buy I mean, a beer or this am? neck for five bucks? Do I have beer at home? <laughs> well, do you have a base neck at home? I don't. Not, uh, I also not, don't have a base body at home. That's not part of the equation. Are you going to buy? I'm buying beer. You're buying beer. All this right. This person says it's the worst. Neither of us want it. We're going to take the food or the sand or the, the beer. I mean, I kind of want it. I don't you're, know what I attach it to. You're in a bar. Someone is holding up this neck and they're like, I will sell this for five bucks. You have five bucks in your pocket. You okay. could be buying a pint or you could buy this neck. What do you do? How many pints have I already had? None. Ooh, I'm buying a pint. He's buying a pint. All right. This song was sent by Chris Seymour. Uh, he says, I'm Chris Seymour from the Bay Area indie rock band Life Size Models. We have a new song called Polar Nights, which explores the role of mental that mental illness can play in defining an individual and the toll it can take on ourselves and the ones we love. The song encourages listeners to believe in the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, even when it might not seem to exist. Uh, find it attached for use for the end of your next two episodes. Um, I think as long ago as this was sent we're way past two episodes but that's okay uh we're gonna play the song it's called polar nights lots of links oh i gotta download this again because we're using the roadcaster to listen to it in real time cannot download attachment let's try again this is the part where we all sit around yeah the, it, it, well i could edit oh it's downloading you know i can edit time. here it goes this is off the races here we go do, 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 enjoy the song guys do, do. stay grounded
I like that. Oh, that was yeah. cool. Cool song, guys. Good job. <laughs>